We're here at the Department of Architecture, University of Lagos and today we're looking at the architecture and significance of the first structure ever built on this campus, the Year One Studio, popularly known as the White House. So today we're going to take you on a journey from before it was built, when it was built and after it was built. And we're going to show you a vision of how we perceive this space to be in the near future. The history of tertiary education in Nigeria spans over a hundred years. As far back as 1891 and 1896, there had been demands for the establishment of an Embryo University of Lagos, first by Edward Wilmot Blyden and later by Otuba Payne and J.S. Lee. In 1932, the establishment of the Yaba College of Technology commenced the paradigm of liberal education as introduced by the early missionaries. In 1962, the Universities of Lagos and Ife were established after the Ashby Commission, which was focused on meeting Nigeria's post-independence educational needs. These developments saw the design and construction of some notable works of architecture today. The Vice Chancellor's Lodge Unilag, designed by Alan Von Richard, is a landmark case study for tropical modernism. The gatehouse of the campus is a more contemporary minimalist design simple in structure and form. The staff quarters were built in 1972 by T.A. Oni and Sons Limited, a prominent indigenous construction company. Today, what is known as the Faculty of Arts Unilag started in 1964 as the Faculty of Humanities. It was in 1975 when it was merged with the then School of African and Asian Studies and redesignated Faculty of Arts. The building was thus the first faculty building on the university campus. But what about the first building ever on the campus? What is known about the site office for the construction of the arts block? The White House consists of three simple geometric forms. The first cuboid, the middle long stretch and the last cuboid. The first part we believed served as the site office storage while the middle long stretch served as the meeting areas or conference rooms and then the last stretch served as offices and administrative function. The architect or designer of this building achieved this through natural materials, materials that were easily available on site, like wood. He used the galvanized iron to support roof trusses and used elements that are tropical, like louvered windows, to ensure cross-ventilation and thermal comfort at all times of, of the day. Something that makes architecture beautiful and sustainable is the ability for that architecture to be flexible. And this building embodies that in the sense that before 1973 and 1974, when this building was originally site office, the first section which was site storage, has been repurposed today as a student workshop area. The middle stretch is now student workstation, a studio workstation. And the last section, which was formerly administrative areas, has been repurposed to lecturers' offices and storage space for student use. Several generations of architecture students have gone through this space. And here's what some of them have to say about what it means to them. As a student that passed through Studio One, University of Lagos, popularly known as the White House, it did not serve as a physical working space, but it also created a psychological and emotional effect on us because it was created for us to work, to play and coexist together as classmates. It also served as a link that introduced us as fresh students into the department and due to its attachment, transitioning into the other studios was very difficult. For me, this place was like a building block or a transition into the world of architecture. It fills my mind with memories of teamwork. We had to do a lot of creative thinking, inspirational finding, well, and friends finding you and you finding friends. The beginning, it was the birth of the architect to me and it opened my eyes to many things. How to use materials around me, you know, how to improvise when giving a project and I learned a lot, it was really inspiring. 
The primary objective of this restoration project is to create a focal point of interest around the White House using elements and materials unique to the place. It also aims to rejuvenate the spaces around the studio by introducing interactive and accommodative public space elements like bamboo stools, pavilions with infographics, a projector screen for the architectural film screening culture and a serpentine wall to define and enclose this into one niche. Finally, the project's thematic and architectural concept has to deal with protecting the trees on the campus. Thus, this, the treehouse project and its construction serves as an architectural statement to advocate for the preservation of trees. We're here at the site for the treehouse and as you can observe, the branch roots of these Kaya Senegalesis trees have been exposed by years of years of erosion. And in order to prevent further erosion and ensure a safe tree house, it is important that we lay a new layer of loamy soil and plant on that leguminous crops in order to prevent further erosion. After 55 years of unknown history, we find ourselves asking the question, what now? Well, the answer to that question is a call to action to everyone involved in the built industry and that is everyone from the students to academics from professionals to policy makers from government to constituencies to preserve and protect heritage in all its form so that the generation and generations after that can benefit and appreciate the importance of what it is.